Welcome to Hatha. It's our Tuesday, Thursday, 9 a.m. class. This class will continue on. It's been continuing on for about 10 years. Why stop now? And the way that I've established this class is through a subscription donation base. So you'll get the same class. It'll be eight or nine classes a week, or I'm sorry, a month, depending on what month it is, right? So some have eight, some have nine, but you have a choice of donating 20, 40, or $80, just depending on what you can manage in your treasure chest and what your time allows. So it's my way to open up the teachings and acknowledge that we all can come with different, you know, amounts of time, amounts of treasure. So I'm hoping that's not too confusing. It's my best attempt at uh, pay as you go because all the programs for class cards, I, I think they just put in one more level of friction that we just don't need. There's enough getting into Zoom. So <laughs> maybe one day, but not today. Um, what else can I tell you about this class? I think you know pretty much everything. Um, be sure and log in to the class recordings that I granted you. So you'll have an email that says, Jess Goulding has granted you access to class recordings. So that's within my website. Okay, so my website is actually kind of a portal to all these different classes. And you'll just use your email and one password for all of it. And the fun thing is if you go in with an app-based program, there's a Kajabi app, right? I'll put that in the, in the chat here, Kajabi app. And that way you don't even have to sign in. You just go there and up they come, okay? Uh, starting next week, we have the classes arrive officially. So I'll leave the cart open all the way through the weekend and through the week at least so you can see and choose what you want to do. Let's see, Sidna asks, is it possible to gift a class to someone or set of classes? Absolutely. So um, let's just email about that afterwards. What we'll do is you would make a payment for this person and I will grant them the, it's called an offer, I'll grant them the class. So they'll have access, but you will have gifted that to them. So that's a great question, Sidna, thank you. And what a nice friend or sister. Um, let's see, what else? So yes, yeah, starting next week, we will log in. There'll be a different Zoom link for each class which is fine because each class has its own set of recordings. So when you go to my website, you'll see there's Calm Minds and you buy either six or 12 weeks. And then there's the Hatha subscription. So every morning you just know what day it is. You go to that day and the first thing you'll find is the Zoom link. So it's right there, ready to go every time. Um, yeah, if you're considering more than one course, you might consider the all access pass which brings each class down to about eight bucks, right? If you're attending all or most of them. So it's kind of the best deal in, in town. You get five classes a week and you get to keep them through February 28th. So it'll be a nice, very rotund semester of classes that you'll have. And I do hope you continue next semester, of course, but you know, you'll have these through the holidays. So that's part of my intention there. Um, let's see, do you pay by the formal month? Like next week would be a week and a half for this month. Um, great question. I need to look at when PayPal or when the program charges you, but I'm thinking if you're, um, I'm thinking since classes start next week, then you would be charged on the 21st, but it might be the first. I love this question. So I'm going to go ahead and go ask that <clears throat> and then I'll be able to answer it. I'll send out an email. If I don't write down that question, I will not remember. So I guess when does subscription hit? Okay. Um, yeah, I kind of base it. So September to October is a month. October to November is a month. November to December is a month. And that's as far as I've been able to plan out. So it basically it's a three months as of now, but this class is always going. So it'll probably just keep going. Um, yeah, there's some things that I can figure out ahead of time and some as we go, but I promise you, I will not be charging you if I'm not teaching your classes. That, I, that you can rest assured about. Um, okay, I think that's all the nitty gritty. Any other questions? We can certainly stick around after and address there, either in chat or live. Okay, so if you would please just sit comfortably, find your most comfortable posture. If you've been sitting for a bit, you might wanna shake out, fold back in. 
Sukhasana might be your preference for your legs are crossed. You might prefer to sit on your heels. You might be in a chair to start. All of this is fine. <clears throat> so those of you that follow the celestial weather might know that today is a new moon. New moons, well, they happen every month. And they are traditionally a time of releasing, letting go, and setting new intentions for the next fullness of the moon, right? So we go from releasing to fulfilling and then letting go again. So we're always on this trajectory. And, um, you know, as, as women, then we often get to feel this in our bodies. And then men have the opportunity to tap into that cyclical knowing simply by paying attention. So it's really a deep part of us. We know the cycles. We know that there are um, these within us. Men have a 24-hour cycle. Women have a monthly cycle. So we're the same but different. Uh, so today, I'm just going to read from, her name is uh, Chala. Well, I'm going to struggle with her last name. Uh, sorry, Chana Nichols. Right? She is Chana Nicholas. Chani Nicholas. Ooh. Okay, I got it. Chani Nicholas. Uh, Deb Kern is my dance teacher. She introduced me to this person who I check in with from time to time. Here's what she says about today. The new moon in Virgo arrives on September 17th at 4 a.m. Pacific time. So here we are. Virgo takes what's in disarray and creates thoughtful rituals wherein balance can be restored. It teaches the technology embedded in nature. Everything we need, we have already been given. Virgo honors the medicine of diversity, knows that with enough of it, all solutions will be present. This sign teaches us that with the right tools, we can work towards a humble solution, ready to sacrifice fame for the fortune of thoughtfully applied craft. Virgo offers the habits that foster healing. So how appropriate is this today? It takes what's in disarray and creates thoughtful rituals where imbalance can be restored. So you know today is going to be a balancing class. I'm intending that everything we do one direction, we do the other front and back, side to side, twisting and turning, as well as a nice pranayama to balance. By honoring the medicine of diversity, all solutions will be present and we have all that we need, which is what we were saying on Tuesday. Let us remember that everything we need for our own enlightenment, our own furthering of our soul, we have these tools, we have them. We only have to move the obstacles aside, which is what is the job of your yoga. Virgo offers the habits that foster healing. I mean, come on, you're in yoga. You are already establishing these habits, which is why I love that this is happening now because you're choosing to incorporate this into your life. So we'll begin by centering and doing a balancing breath that will prepare us for a balancing practice. And then I'll encourage you later to do some sort of new moon ritual, something that comes to mind that you can release, right? You can let it go, write it down, burn it, let it go as, as a prayer or an offering, or set an intention for this next phase of the moon and how you want to incorporate healthy habits and uh, balanced nature. Okay, sitting tall. Push into your fingers, rise high with your heart. Lengthen through your spine, take a gorgeous breath in. Just breathe in this day of newness. And as you exhale, take a nice sigh, shoulders back and down. Let's do this once again. Inhale, lengthen, lift, shrug. Exhale, shoulders back and down. <sighs> lift your dominant hand. Bring together index finger and middle finger. Fold them into your palm. Turn your hand towards you, lifting your wrist. Plug your nose with your thumb and take a nice deep breath in. Change the nostril, exhale. Now, if your nose is stuffy this morning, please do this in your mind. When you get the hang of it, close your eyes, inhale, same nostril. Change to exhale. 
Relax at the bottom of the exhale. The inhale naturally returns. And always change to exhale. Keep going like this on your breath timing. This balance is the hemisphere of the brain, hemispheres. And the energy within you, Nadi Shodhana. Do one more round. Whatever you're finishing, do one more round. Bring your palms together at your heart. Notice how you feel. Bathe yourself in compassion if you're not feeling balanced. That's okay. We're heading that direction. Notice how close or far you're feeling from the connection to your joy. There is joy within you. It only gets clouded when we have imbalance. So just notice where that is today. It comes and goes. Let's chant the sound of Om once together, bringing the sacred syllable to our practice. Take a deep breath in. Exhale all the way. Breathe into Om. Om. Release your head to your heart. Lower your hands, slowly open your eyes. Good. Once again, lift your dominant hand and take it across your body to the opposite side of your neck for cortisol reduction remedy. Squeeze your neck so that we're handling, dealing, noticing how we're running stress hormone in our body, which takes us out of balance. So squeeze and pull, massage your shoulder. Balance out the stress of the day by moving it from your core out to the perimeters, All right? So you're bringing that sense of stress and energy out into your hands, squeezing now with your thumb from the heel of your hand to the base of each finger. And then from the base of each finger out to the tip. This is one of my favorite yoga therapy practices. As you know, we do it plenty, but daily would not be too much. Give your hand a little shake and a deep cleansing breath. <sighs> other side, hand comes across to the other side of your neck and just yummy, yummy, grab that ball. Oh. I know a lot of us hold tension here, so just lovingly pull on that muscle is always going downwards. Okay, so come down the neck, top of the shoulder. You might notice that your tummy might do like a little flip in there. That's okay. It's a little bit of adrenaline releasing. This is fine. All right. And then from the heel of the hand to the base of the finger. Base of the finger out to each tip. If you get cold fingers, then this is for you, right? We need to get more blood and prana out there. Give it a shake and a deep cleansing breath. <sighs> Come on to your back, please. Okay, on your back, knees come in, 
and just do some little circles. Just allow your body to settle into the feeling of your back body on your mat. And then extend arms and legs up towards the ceiling, curl and spread fingers and toes. So we're bringing prana, life force, out to the edges, out to the fingers. Now roll wrists and ankles, keeping those joints lubricated, pliable. Good, go the other way. And now shake. Shake your legs like you're having a tantrum in the air. Shake your arms like you just don't care. They go in and out. They go up and down. They go round and round. A releasing, a releasing, a releasing. Now on your inhale, squeeze your legs together, stretch them out, long arms overhead. Exhale, pull your knees in, tuck your chin. Inhale, reach long. Exhale, pull it in, belly button to your spine. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, squeeze in, oh, yummy. Inhale, reach. Exhale, pull in. Twice more. Good, keep your knees in, head goes back, arms to the sides. Let your knees fall to one side, opposite shoulder softens towards the ground and breathe. We're always dealing in balance in yin and yang, left, right, up, down, black, white, all of it. So from movement, we pause with stillness. Twists are traditionally a way to bring your nervous system back towards neutral. So we'll be twisting plenty today. And now move through. Twist your legs, take your legs to the other side, enjoy the other twist, breathe being still. Back to neutral, feet to the floor. We've already done some good contraction in the front body. So let's open the front body now with dynamic bridge. Inhaling, hips lift, arms come through the air wide and relax. And as you exhale, slowly deflate, arms come up to go down, hips return to your mat. On your breath timing, inhale to lift and exhale to lower. One more. Pause and be still. Bring your attention inside. Notice how you feel. And right arm reaches overhead. Roll to your right side. Make your way onto your belly. Arms alongside your body. Now we contract the back body again. Shoulders roll back. Inhale, lift into locust pose, Shalabhasana. If it's too much for your back, please put your legs down. On your exhale, lower forehead to your mat. Relax your shoulders. Inhale, shoulders roll back, rise up, lift, hug the back body, eyes are bright. Exhaling, close your eyes, soften to your mat, and be still for just a moment on your timing.
Let's do one more. Then turn to one cheek, bend your knees and windshield wiper your legs side to side. Just relax your hips, your butt, your legs, your jaw. And then hand, arms go straight, I'm sorry, legs go straight. Hands come alongside of you for some breathing cobra. So now the legs are anchored to the ground, feet extended. Hands there alongside breasts or a little bit lower. Roll your shoulders back and as you inhale, coil up into cobra. Shoulders back, elbows back, lifting your chest. Exhale, lower. Now turn your toes under. Inhale, squeeze your legs straight. So the knees will come off the ground, upper body is relaxed. Exhale, lower. Inhale, cobra. Stretch through straight legs and toes. Exhale, lower. Turn your toes under, inhale, straighten your legs. Squeeze from your butt to your heels. Exhale, lower. Very subtle down there, but still grounding for your energy. Good, here's the pattern. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower. Inhale, straight legs, squeezing, reaching. Exhale, lower. Let's go twice more. Balancing upper body. And lower body. And from there, move back to child's pose. So from back bends to forward. From movement to stillness. Build pauses into your day and you will have more peace. Walk your body forward now and lower onto your elbows. Now let's activate our core nice and strong. So elbows are down and you can either interlace your fingers or keep your hands separated into sphinx. Either is fine. Now knees are on your mat. Take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, hug your belly button in, drag your knees towards your elbows and do a little curve of your low back. Inhale, relax that. Exhale, pull your low belly in and up. Lift your pelvic floor in and up, drag your knees towards your elbows, inhale to release. A couple more times, activate inner body strength, lift, lift, lift from the pelvic floor to the belly button, then let it go. And one more time. Good, and let it go. All right, this time, draw in, engage, keeping that, turn your toes under and straighten your legs, squeeze your legs. Come on to one elbow for side plank. So stack your feet. I'm on my right side here. You can also lower your right knee and do a modified version. This is fine. Otherwise, come into right side plank, nice and low. Hips are high. Breathe here, stabilizing the whole right side of your torso. Get some strength to the pose by squeezing your legs. All right, move through, plank, other side. Now for my friends with scoliosis, you'll notice one of these sides is much easier than the other. You don't have to do both sides. You do the side that's harder to do every time. Lower into Sphinx, take a breath. All right, scoliosis begins with imbalance, so you double down on the weaker side to balance it out. Let's do that series one more time. So turn your toes under, engage your core, lift up into plank. Again, you can lower your right knee or coming into side plank on your elbow. Root down into the standing hand, elbow and foot to help stabilize. 
Move through, plank, other side. And lower down, sphinx pose here. Stretch out your legs. A soft bend behind the shoulder blades. Walk your elbows forward as needed if this feels too intense. And now tuck your chin, turn and look way over your left shoulder to your left pinky toe. Breathe here, feeling some length and stretch through the right side of your neck, shoulder. You might feel it into your hip or down your leg. On your inhale, neutral. Exhale, tuck your chin, turn and look down to the right ankle. It's okay if you don't see it, you're just heading that direction. Breathe a sense of ease, letting your tissues agree with you to be in this pose. Once more, each side. Coming through center, last time. Through center once again, and back to child's pose. Walk your hands a little bit away from you, pushing into your palms, lift your underarms, and then sink your hips back. So we did a lot of upper body back bend there. Add some lift to your upper back here. Again, it's the opposite of Sphinx. <laughs> On your next inhale, return to all fours. Turn your toes under. Take a deep breath in. Exhaling, push down through your hands, belly button in and up, and hover your knees. Fortify your arms, steady, downward facing dog. Now, if you have a habit of stepping your feet forward, I'm gonna encourage you to keep them back where they were, using your body's proportions to tell you. Sometimes there's adjustments that are needed, but basically we can say the toes know where to be. If you're curving in your upper back, bend your knees, stick your butt way up, get your body nice and long. Okay, step your feet together, extend your left leg straight back. All right, so try to put your foot through an invisible wall behind you. Maybe you have a wall. Send that foot down. Anchor your standing heel more. And lower that side. Shift. Right leg reaches back. Press through that foot. Longer, longer you go. Left heel anchors down. And lower down. Slowly walk forward. Uttanasana. With your hands on your shins, inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Reaching forward, inhale, rise all the way up. And exhale, palms together at your heart. Take a breath, take a moment, find some stillness here. Surya Namaskar A. Sun salutations, which has a beautiful flow of opening the front body, opening the back body, right? So just acknowledge that we're balancing the front and back sides as we go through these postures. We'll do three rounds. We go, inhale, stretch up. Here we go, open the front body. So hug your belly button and take your hips forward, upper body back bend. As you exhale, again, lift your navel forward, fold, back body stretches full. Inhale, lengthen your spine, stabilizing. Exhaling, fold, step to plank pose. Again, front and back parts equally representing. Chaturanga Dandasana, lower halfway down. Inhale, Bhujangasana, back bend. Exhale, Adho Mukhaswanasana, forward bend. Three deep cleansing breaths. To go with this balancing new moon, I encourage you to do a little lion's breath here. Stick out your tongue, <sighs> right? Reduce heat, release toxicity inside on the breath. We release a lot of waste on the breath. So get it out there. Then step or hop Uttanasana. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to fold. 
strong body is inhale rise back bend again squeeze your legs exhale palms together take a deep cleansing breath release your hands we go inhale exhale inhale lengthen exhale bow inhale plank exhale chaturanga inhale bhujangasana exhale adha mukha svanasana lion's breath Step or hop, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, palms together. Now stay and breathe in the stillness if that's what your body is craving. Or take yourself on one more round of sun salutations. Your timing tuned in to your natural rhythms of forward and back. Balance yourself as you go. Whenever you finish, there's no need to rush, be still. Balance the movement of the day with stillness. Notice if your mind really pushes back against doing nothing. Doing nothing is actually doing a big old something. Find lots of time to do nothing. Chair pose. Big toes together, heels a little separated. Spread your toes and imagine that your legs are one. So hug them in. Inhale, lift high. Root through your legs. So there's a separation right there at the core, deep through the pelvis, pushing down, right? And from there, you balance that by rising up through the side bodies. So there's a root to rise. I know a lot of you love that phrase. It is so applicable. Now palms together coming into chair pose. Heels down, shins forward, thighs back. Engage your belly the way you did when we were on the floor. Breathe in. As you exhale, surrender forward, knees bent deeply. Rise up, inhale, root. Bright eyes lifting, exhale, soft eyes, chair. Breathe in here. Surrender. Effort, lift. Exhale, neutral. Stay to inhale. Surrender. Last time, effort to rise. Right effort, right action. Exhale, neutral. Stay to breathe in, peaceful. And last time, let it go. Okay, root to rise. And come into the side bodies now. Lower your left hand. Reach up to the ceiling with your right hand. Feel a moment of length. Then on your exhale, as you squeeze your legs together, crescent. Push your bottom hand against your leg so the top hand can go away. 
Okay, balancing both sides here. Left side is active and strong. Right side can open and lengthen. Yang, yin. Inhale. Exhale. Push your hand against your leg. Activate. Top arm over. Lengthen. Breathe. Active legs, surrendering body. Once more each side. Now you have a choice here. You can remove, lose that, use that arm again. Take hands wide or fingers together, thumbs intertwined, reach. Try to get your arms straight as you point your body to the side. A little more effort here, balance with easy breathing. Inhale to come up, exhale, crescent. Again, strong legs, surrendering body. Strong arms, surrendering breath. And inhale to come up and palms together. Shift your weight onto your left foot. Inhale here. Now as you exhale, bend your right knee behind you. Flex your foot, so you're gonna feel the hamstring engage. Inhale, lift tall. Exhale, bend your standing leg and tilt your body forward. You're like a bird at a bird bath here, right? So tilt, don't fall over if you can, and rise up. Shift onto your right. Bend your left knee, foot is flexed. Bend your standing leg and tip forward. Try to keep both legs turning in. Inhale up. Exhale, change. One fluid movement now. Bend the left knee, bow forward. Whew. Inhale to two feet. Shift onto the right. Exhale, forward bend. Good. Once more each side. Okay, now shift onto the left. Again, bend your standing leg, bow forward a little bit. Now just reach your legs straight back and reach up as you land. Right away, let's open up to warrior two. Left forearm to your thigh, right hand to your hip. So if your left leg is forward, right leg is back, pull down on your hip and open your chest. Roll the shoulder back as you lean back. See if you can bend this knee out over that ankle. So stretching long inner thigh. Now balance this stillness, right? Steady legs, steady roots, upper body flowing. Overhead as you inhale with the arm, exhale down, back and up. Kind of sweep the air around you. And the next time your arm is reaching up, keep it up. Roots of your legs rise. Right away, other side. Turn your right thigh out, coming into warrior two. Right forearm to your thigh, left hand to your hip, pull down, open the chest. Lean back. Notice something with your eyes. Take in something that makes you present. Okay, we can get a lot into our head, but I want you to be in your body, be in your space, be in your body here. Just take another moment to arrive. And then when it feels like you're here and present, take your top arm around again. Let your upper body swoon with the movement of your arm. Try to keep that knee out over the ankle. Challenge yourself to a deep position here. And the next time your left arm is up, keep it up. Return to warrior two. Good, now we have to balance that side. So turn to face your right leg into a lunge. Okay, we're coming out through the reverse. Palms together, shift onto your front foot, lift your back leg and bend. 
Ooh, challenge the balance. Challenge the balance and two feet together. Good. Take a deep cleansing breath here. And step open to a wide open stance, ankles and wrists basically in alignment. Trikonasana on the left, turn your left thigh out, right thigh in, hands to your hips, grow tall. Now take your pubic bone back towards your back heel. Okay, so tip that, but then elongate your body and lean back. Good, Trikonasana. You might like to have a block. You can touch your ankle, shin, or the floor. But as I was saying in last night's class, we don't want to feel pulling and yanking up here at the insertion where your muscle meets the sitting bone. If that's the case for you, deeply bend this leg so you feel a stretch in your hamstring. You want to get into the meat of the muscle, not the insertion. Okay, we don't want any popping and snapping going on up there. Be gentle, loving, and caring to your body. Good. Now root down. Inhale to come up. Bend your knee, returning to warrior two. Cactus arms. Now turn your back leg in. High lunge with cactus. Okay, now we're going to revolve warrior two. Squeeze around your waist and twist. So draw your left arm back. Draw it back. Draw it back. Draw it back. Twist, twist, twist. Stay rooted through your legs. Now reach the arms straight out. Lengthen from your spine in every direction. Hold for stillness with breath for a moment. <clears throat> now, can we cartwheel all the way around to the other warrior two? Warrior two and warrior two. Ah, what is this, flow class? No, <laughs> but there's flow everywhere. Okay, so right thigh is out, left thigh is in. Point your pubic bone towards your back heel and straighten your front leg. Trikonasana on the right. So if that confused you, that's pretty awesome because that means you're going to have to figure things out, make some new neural pathways, leads to a healthy brain. If you do the same thing every day, it can create a good deep pattern of health. So that's one good thing, but it needs to be balanced by trying new things. So if you always walk the same path in your neighborhood, try starting at the end and going the other way. It feels like a whole different path. All right, or explore getting lost. You'll find your way. We have the technology. All right, so just notice what are your healthy patterns is what Virgo is asking us. And which ones do we need to release? And which ones of our, of our patterns need balancing? Okay, here we go. Up you come to warrior two. All right, elbows into cactus. Now turn to face that front foot. Steady, steady. Inhale, high body. Squeeze your inner thighs and twist to the right. Pull that elbow back, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. Stay or reach through the arms. If you're feeling tippy, hug your midline. Good, now reach out in every direction, through the legs, through the arms, through your crown. Okay, now we gotta do Ninja Warrior all the way around to Warrior Two. And just straighten the leg, turn your toes in. Here we go, nice and symmetrical. Inhale, lift, and exhale, forward fold. Letting go of confusion, coming into what is known. We want them both. Hands to your thighs, bend your knees, belly buttons in, slowly roll up. And walk your legs together, take some big marching steps. Good. Okay, now we're going to revolve the triangle. This is where you might want to block or you can just use your shin or your leg. So step open again. Left thigh turns out, now right thigh turns in deeply. Okay, so deeply that you square your hips. It's fine to hop that right foot over to the side. So now you're actually facing 
So left for this side, right? Both hips pointing forward. Inhale, lift. Now exhale, take your arms out to a T. Using that same idea of twisting, twist through your spine, just like you did in Warrior Two, and now reach down through your back heel. Good, push into your back heel, send your top, your right hand forward, forward, forward. Send your body out, parallel towards the floor. Now touch your hand to your shin or your thigh, right? That's fine, or all the way to the floor. Let's go left hand to your hip. Pulling that hip back, twist your body towards the ceiling, which might be just a little bit away from the floor, but you're heading in that direction. Okay, again, if you need to bend your front knee a little bit, do that, but keep pulling that left hip crease back. You would love to swing around and forward. Just revolve your triangle here. Left shoulders rolling back. If your top shoulder is straight over your bottom shoulder, you can stretch the arm up. But if you're twisted, don't even bother with the arm. Keep using the leverage of your hip to roll your shoulder back. Let's go two more breaths in a revolved triangle. And turn your gaze to your mat. Bend that knee a little bit and cartwheel up. Step your feet together. It's an intense stretch on one side. Okay, here we go to the other side. Open up and turn. Now, right thigh turns out, left thigh, whoom, turn it way in. Square your hips or square them-ish, okay? There's not a lot of squares in the human body. So we say square, but we mean just turn as best you can. Now take a breath and feel your feet. Return to your foundation. As you exhale, engage your core. Draw from your feet up. Let's take arms out to the side again. Now, hugging around your waist, twist. Think of the right arm going back, 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 back. Reach it back, reach it back. Keep reaching the right arm back, but now the left hand reaches forward, taking your body with it. Good, stay or touch your fingertips to the floor or your shin or your thigh. Right hand to your hip, revolve, turn your shoulder. Back, 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 back. Again, you can bend the front knee a little bit if you need to. Keep pulling the right hip crease back. And if your shoulder, top shoulder, is directly above the bottom shoulder, okay? So be honest with yourself. <laughs> Takes a long time to get there. If it's balanced like that, top over bottom, you can reach the arm up. If it's forward, keep the, your hand on your hip. Keep working the twist. All right, turn your gaze to your mat. Root through your legs, inhale to come up and around. And once again, step your legs together. Take a deep cleansing breath. Okay, half moon rising, Ardha Chandrasana. So from a compressed, twisty pose to an open and balancing pose. Boom, wide you go again. Right, I'm sorry, left side, warrior two. Just a nice little prep here, nothing big. Right hand to your hip, establish the roots of your front foot, shorten your stance, and here we go. Fingertips to the floor or to a block or even the wall. Right leg comes up, rooting down through your standing leg, reach just as much through your lifted leg. Now again, here, if your top shoulder can roll back and is over the bottom shoulder, then you can take that arm up. You can keep looking at the floor for steadiness or turn your face to neutral. All right, each of these phases gives you a little bit more of a challenge. Decide for yourself. And then finally, for the classic version, you turn, but turn from your waist, not your head. Your head will go, but turn from your waist. Pin your ribs back to turn your face towards your top thumb. When you become tired, stretch out more. Good, if you're looking up, look down at the floor, reach through your toes, Whew. come back to warrior two. Okay, let's go right away, other side. Left hand to your hip, bend your knee, take a breath. Gather your thoughts, balance in your mind, and step up to half moon rising. 
Once you have your foundation, extend, extend, extend. All right, the top shoulders balance, reach up. Play with looking forward. Or maybe you engage your waist more and turn towards your top hand. I recommend looking past your hand to the ceiling to a point of stillness. Your hand's gonna be moving around up there. So find a still point. Okay, return your gaze to the floor. Reach through your leg, rise up and step your feet together. Well done, let's breathe. So we did a half moon on the new moon. <laughs> okay, dynamic malasana. This is yogi squat. So if your heels pop up when you come into a squat, then please put your heels up on a blanket. Spread your toes, arrive. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. If this bothers your knees, stay in a chair pose, nice and high, squeezing your quadriceps. Root through your legs, inhale to come up. Stay to exhale. Good, now let's catch our rhythm. Inhale, stay, lifting higher. Exhale, descend. Stay to inhale. Exhale, root to rise. Again, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And out. Last time. Stay. And now have a seat on your blanket, feet together, knees apart in Baddha Konasana. Rock side to side a little bit, let your bones settle, tissues relax. And now before we forward fold, we need to balance the heat we've created, right? So we're warmed up, we've got heat flowing through us. So let's use Shita Lee Pranayama to cool down. This is a great breath if you're feeling heat and agitation throughout your day, especially when it's hot outside. And if you like spicy foods and you tend to have the hot things that you love, I'm a pitta as well, so I get it. This is a great breath work for you to do several times a day. Okay, so if you know it, go ahead. If not, stick out your tongue and roll your tongue. Breathe in through the rolled tongue. Then put your tongue on the roof of your mouth and exhale through your nose. Keep going like that. And if you can't roll your tongue, simply pull your breath in as if breathing through a straw, feeling the air over the tongue. All right, that or along the sides. Okay, so choose what's best for you to feel cool air coming over your tongue, then tongue to the roof of your mouth, exhale through your nose. Let your body relax with every exhale. Now 
And then with every exhale, let your body fold more forward. You can continue with Shitali as you do this. Release the manipulation of your breath and just be in the forward fold. And lengthen through your crown. Breathe in easy as you rise up. Use your hands to help close your legs. Pause for a moment. Lean back on your hands. Separate your feet. Wide, gentle windshield wipers. So from a deep external rotation of your legs, now experiment with a deep internal rotation. All right, so the knee comes in, lengthen as you lower. Back and forth you go, nice and slow, pausing where it feels your body would like to be for an extra moment. Then if you have your strap or your belt, go ahead and get it. If not, I'll offer a modification and come on to your back. Back to where we started, kind of like a bookend. Take your knees apart and together. It's a little gentle massage of your thigh bone into your hips. And then feet to the floor. Okay, take your strap over the arch of your right foot. Extend that leg straight towards the ceiling as you reach your left leg long. Now we did lots of effort through the legs. This is a more relaxed way. So hold your strap in a way that your arms can kind of relax and dangle. Your hands are doing the effort. And for you, your leg might be farther back because you have tighter legs. That's fine, then go there, right? Go to where you feel a sense of stretch to the back of your legs and breathe. And you find tension creeping up anywhere in your body, send it away on the exhale. And release that leg. Other side. Again, set up your bones and let your muscles be easy. Once your body is set up, you can turn to your breath and begin to balance the length of your inhale and your exhale. You can do this by counting or using the letters of the alphabet, but however long it takes you to breathe in, use that same length to breathe out.
and release that leg. One dynamic bridge to then open the front body one last time. So feet to the floor, shoulders underneath you. Inhale, lift, set you bandhasana. Again, balanced inhale to exhale. And release down. Now ask your body, what last movements would I like to feel complete and balanced at the end of my practice? So take a moment, tune in, listen, and follow. Only when that feels complete, stretch out on your back or out on your belly for Shavasana. So if you want a more open expression, traditional corpse pose, arms to the side at a slight diagonal, palms up. If you feel that you need a little more protection and care, place your hands on your belly. Or if you wanna feel a more grounding effect, of a downward facing Shavasana and turn over onto your belly. You can even take your arms and legs out into the shape of an X, kind of like a earth hug, very grounding. Virgo takes what's in disarray and creates thoughtful rituals where imbalance can be restored. It teaches the technology embedded in nature. Everything we need, we have already been given. Virgo honors the medicine of diversity, knows that with enough of it, all solutions will be present. This sign teaches us that with the right tools, we can work towards a humble solution ready to sacrifice fame for the fortune of thoughtfully applied craft, Virgo offers the habits that foster healing.
begin to let your breathing deepen. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Draw your knees to your chest or move back to child's pose. Roll to your side and rest or rest in child's pose. Use the strength of your arms to help you slowly return to a seated posture. Let's finish with the sound of OM once together. Breathe in. balance and peace on this Virgo new moon. Namaste. Thank you for coming to Hatha this morning or whenever you're watching the recording and I hope to see you tomorrow at noon. Finish up the week with low to lay low. And invigorating Vinyasa practice followed by a yin inspired restorative rest right, to get you settled for your weekend. Okay, so either bye for now or stick around if you have any questions or things you'd like to share or just to say hi. Bye.